is up guys, we're going to be doing the deck profile for Altergeist here. This will be my first time doing an Altergeist deck profile, so uh, do bear with me with uh, my choices here. But I have been playing this deck for a long time, in fact I've even been playtesting this against different decks as well, especially Crawlers, and uh, I will say, funnily enough, this deck does lose the Crawlers quite a bit, uh, but overall it is one of the uh, top decks of this current format, and uh, it wasn't hit by the ban list, so definitely going to be a really good uh, deck to actually um, go up against all the other uh, top decks around. But starting off, we're playing 3 Marionetta. I think this card is one of the best cards in the actual deck itself. Uh, a lot of people say Multifake is great, a lot of people say Melee Seek is great, but Marionetta just does so much for this deck, and uh, it's actually become one of my most favorite cards within this uh, particular archetype itself. So... Uh, right off the bat, we're playing three of them, but most decks already play three anyway. Uh, we're also playing three Melee Seek, just a really amazing card. If it's sent to the graveyard, then you can add any Altergeist card anyway, and it can also attack directly, and if it deals damage, then get rid of something on your opponent's field. It's just really great. Uh, we're playing three copies of Multifake, of course. Uh, ever since this card came out, uh, Altergeist have just been skyrocketing in terms of uh, how they perform. And uh, this card is just really amazing. I don't think you'll ever drop down to uh, any lower copies at all. I think everyone's uh, stuck on the fact that uh, these are the ratios you'll be playing. Uh, 3 through 3 for these particular cards. But of course there are other Altergeist cards as well that you won't be playing 3 of. And that will be uh, Sequitos. Uh, Sequitos is um, a really interesting card. It actually allows you to bounce back stuff, but of course um, it's not as great as these particular cards here. So overall we're only uh, going to be playing two of them and uh, it works pretty well, yeah. Alright, so a lot of people are going to be uh, quite uh, confused about why I'm actually playing this, but... I am playing two copies of Altergeist Kunkuri. A lot of people play one of them, some people don't even bother adding it to the deck. Uh, but I do think that this card is quite amazing, and it combos pretty well against uh, together with Sequiltos. Uh, so I don't understand why certain people choose not to play it. But at the same time, I get why people also are confused by the fact that I'm playing two copies of it. But uh, so far, it has worked in every single situation, and I've never had this card as a dead card before. Uh, it's never bricked on me, and it's just been working amazingly here, and I think uh, playing two of them is definitely worth it. I've been playing, I even played three of them before the time uh, Multifaker came out, but it, since Multifaker came out, I did play two now. So, it's a different card, but, uh, you know, I really like the card itself as well. Uh, we're going to be playing a new tech here. This is called Mana Dragon uh, Zernitron. So if a spell trap you control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect and is now in the graveyard or banished, you can special summon this card from your graveyard um, or hand even if not. Um, then you can set one spell and trap that is banished or in your graveyard to your spell trap zone. Uh, you can only use uh, this effect of... Um, this dragon once per turn, and if summoned this way, banish it when it leaves the field, but overall, you're pretty much getting to recover your spells that got destroyed, uh, spells or trap that is, and also, it's a 2200 beat stick, it's not bad at all, so I definitely do like this card here, and obviously with Altergeist, you're not really going to have many high attacks unless you go into link summoning, and uh, for him, he's just a nice beat stick to actually bring out here. For hand traps, aside from Kunkuri, of course, we're just playing uh, three copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit here. Uh, Ghost Ogre is still a really great card. Of course, the uh, Ash Blossom is coming out in the new Salomon Great structure deck, so when it actually comes out, then I'll definitely play three copies of those and replace um, the Ghost Ogres. Um, so yeah, but for now, Ash Blossom is still a very expensive card, of course, and even though the price has dropped, uh, it's not going to be... Uh, an affordable price it's not going to be a budget price at least and uh, considering uh, the title of this particular deck profile I am actually doing a uh, budget variant of this so overall there won't be any expensive cards in here Moving on to spells, we're playing three copies of Pot of Duality. Uh, we aren't really special summoning that much. I mean, we are just setting a bunch of cards down, setting up to negate your opponents most of the time. So overall, I am willing to play three copies of Pot of Duality here. So it's not too bad at all. And um, this card actually hasn't bricked on me at all. It hasn't restrained me in any way. It's been working quite well. 
I'm also playing two copies of Pot of Desires. We are playing mostly three copies of everything, and the cards that we're playing one or two copies of, we don't really care if we lose them anyway. So with Pot of Desires, it's uh, not a bad card at all, and we always want to be drawing more cards anyway, so definitely a great card to play there. Also playing two copies of Cord by the Grave, uh, one of the most annoying things is to obviously deal with other hand traps, and I think uh, Cord of the... Cord by the Grave at 2 is definitely going to help out quite a bit for this deck, but uh, no need to play 3, we have plenty of trap cards in this deck. We are also playing uh, 1 copy of Foolish Burial, uh, we could actually just send cards to the graveyard and together it combos off with Marionetta quite well. We are also playing 1 for 1, we have Melly Seek, so it's a level 1 target, and we are also playing a Monster Reborn, uh, sometimes we just want to bring back the certain Link monsters that can actually do quite a bit of things here. But that's it for spells, we're obviously going to be playing a lot of traps here. I think there's a total of 13, so one of the more interesting ones are two copies of Protocol. I used to play three of these, but I figure, you know, no one's really going to be destroying them, you're going to be negating them anyway, so overall I think two copies definitely uh, makes a good number here, because even though both are destroyed, there are ways to actually recover them from the graveyard, so you're never really going to lose this card at all. We're also playing two copies of Manifestation, I felt like three was just unnecessary, and considering the Altergeist cards can be recovered anyway, uh, there's no need to actually play three copies of it. Two copies of Personal Spoofing, um, I personally think this card is not as great as most people say it is. Uh, this card has actually bricked a lot for me, um, although it's an Altergeist card, it doesn't have Altergeist in the name, as a result it's not searchable, it's just terrible and it doesn't even work together with protocol so i just decided to play two copies of it but if anything i might even consider dropping it down to one but for now two is fine i'm also playing one copy of uh, solemn judgment here i think uh it's just a great card to deal with something that's just impossible to deal with so I uh, put it in there, and we're also playing two copies of Lost Wind. Again, we just want to negate your opponent, and this card is just really good because, uh, again, playing two copies of it, it's the same thing as playing four copies of it because they can come back as well, so it's a really great card. Uh, we're also playing two copies of Solemn Strike. Uh, you never have enough of uh, negating monster effects here, and sometimes your protocols might be gone, so I have a Solemn Strike just in case. I really hate hand traps for this particular format here. And speaking of uh, hate on hand traps, I'm playing Mind Crush. Um, sometimes I just call out whatever hand trap I think they might have, like Ash and Ghost Ogre. And, uh, you know, sometimes in a game 2 or game 3, they might side in Winter Cherries. I'll call that as well and get rid of it. And uh, Mind Crush has been working really well for me. I'm only playing 2, of course, but overall, this card is a lot better in this particular format. Given that uh, you're playing a deck that searches a lot from the deck, so if you're playing against something like Sky Strikers uh, and they activate Engage to search some stuff, then by all means, Mind Crush actually does the job. It can actually get rid of those cards that they immediately add to the hand. And a lot of decks do actually do a lot of searching these days, so Mind Crush is not a bad option at all. But that's pretty much it for the main deck. Let's move on to the extra deck. Alright, so moving on to Extra Deck, we're going to be playing one copy of Altergeist uh, Prime Banshee. Uh, this card I'm just playing purely for fun, there are plenty of decks that don't really need to play this. In fact, this is just an optional card for you guys, uh, you don't have to play it, but for me, I am playing a budget variant of this deck, and as you can see, I'm not playing anything else. In fact, I'd like to mention that I'm not playing Infinite Impermanence, even though it's a deck that I'll, it's a card that I'll definitely recommend you play three copies of. Uh, if you want to play Infinite Impermanence, you can just take out both the Solemn Strikes and maybe one copy of the Lost Winds, and then you can throw in Infinite Impermanence instead. So I definitely recommend you do play three of that, but since this is an uh, budget version, then you definitely want to be, uh, ch you know, choosing cards that can be alternatives to that. Uh, Prime Banshee is just something I chose to play for fun. We're also going to be playing two copies of uh, Hexdeer here. I think three is a bit too much there, and most games they just go into two at the very most, so Altergeist Hexdeer, just a great card to negate stuff, and uh, also it does also become your big, uh, beat stick for the deck as well, so quite nice there. Uh, we're also going to be playing one Altgeist Kidolga. Kidolga is a decent card, it's, you know, it's 
all right. You don't have to play it, but at the same time, it's quite a nifty card, and uh, I don't mind actually having it there since it actually has the name Altergeist in it. So not too bad at all. We're playing a Sayuja, not a card I particularly go into that much, uh, but I still just put it there as an option because we have plenty of space. Uh, playing a Deco Talker, you can you know stack up enough uh, attack points. So sometimes you might need to attack and. Uh, you just have a deco talk already. We're playing a summon sorceress as well. Most of your Altergeist cards, if not all of them, are all spellcasters, so uh, works with summon sorceress. Uh, we're playing a Gaia Saber here. Again, just more so for beat stick options. Uh, for Link 2s, we're playing Nightmare Phoenix and Nightmare Cerberus. Uh, we're also playing an Underclock Taker as well. Just, again, different cards that you can just try out for the deck. Uh, Arkashic Magician, Lanferencus. And we're playing two copies of Link Rebo as well because we have Merely Seek as well. So uh, this is pretty much it for the whole deck. Um, it's a pretty fun deck. And like I said, you guys can already see it in the title, it's a budget deck. So don't hate on this deck too much. Uh, you know, it's not meant to be um, anything like the typical deck that you usually see with Infinite Impermanence or stuff like that. Uh, but overall, this is still a very strong deck on its own, even in a budget variant. This deck does so much, and it can definitely compete in this current format as well, In among the top decks of the current format. So, but yeah, not a bad card. I would say the only weakness it really has is uh, two crawlers, because crawlers are just able to uh, have multiple effects going off if you negate them as well. So... Yeah, but that's pretty much it for this deck profile, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, do leave some tips down below if you have any, uh, but in the meantime, hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time.